uh, we all know you're an avid reader. Um, could you share a reading recommendation for us, potentially a new one, that uh, maybe fundamentally change your viewpoint on something? Well, there are very few 90 favorite five-year-olds that are changing their viewpoint, I think. <laughs> I, but I do find that there are amusing anecdotes and so forth that I occasionally read and like. But I like the old anecdotes pretty well, too, like the one about the bed and the horse. It's, it's so obvious, oh, some of these pithy stories. The storytelling really works to get messages around. One of the interesting things is look at our modern politicians and then think about Abraham Lincoln. Who in our modern politician reminds you of Abraham Lincoln in either party? Lincoln at one time was hired by some guy whose partner had died, leaving practically no money and wife and three children. And he owed some money to his surviving partner. And the surviving partner came to Lincoln and said, I want you to collect this money. And Lincoln said to this guy, he said, well, he says, you look like an enterprising fellow who can get that much money back pretty easily through a little effort. And if you want to wring a little money out of this poor widow and her three children, you'll have to get a different kind of lawyer. Does that remind you of any of our modern politicians? That was Abraham Lincoln. What a story. No wonder he's remembered. And you know who deserves the credit for Abraham Lincoln and never gets it? It's his stepmother. Abraham Lincoln was the child of two illiterates. But the stepmother, who his father just admired in desperation to help raise the children, she took a shine to Lincoln and saw he was bookish, and she helped him all the way along. I'm going to donate a picture of that stepmother eventually to a particular place because I'm, I admire what that stepmother accomplished in life. Imagine being responsible more than any other person for the life of Abraham Lincoln.